Hello once again from the Midlands, I'm Patrick Burns and our guest today can uh, tell you a thing or two about the ins and outs of politics. Sir Peter Luff is a former Defence Minister and after nearly a quarter of a century as a Worcestershire Conservative MP, he is bowing out, going of his own accord at the general election in five months' time. Nina Gill, by contrast, well, she's been out, but now she's in again. Six months ago, she recaptured Labour's seat in the European Parliament, which she'd actually lost five years before. Whereas Jim Carver, well, he's in for the first time, uh, elected as one of UKIP's three West Midlands MEPs last May. Very good that you could all be together at the same time. Thanks for joining us here today. And indeed, it is with the European Union that we begin. Did you know there are enough Brits in Spain to fill a city the size of Coventry. Over 300,000 British expats live there permanently, among over 2 million who spend at least part of each year in one or another of our European partner countries. We can be EU migrants too, it seems, but what if Britain leaves the EU? Our BBC WM political reporter Susanna Mendonca has been to Aragon in northeast Spain, where one family of Midlanders are making new lives for themselves on a farm near the town of Maella. A typical day in a less than typical location for a couple of Brummies. Further left there. Neil's picking olives on the 35-acre farm in rural Spain that he and wife Rachel now call home. They swapped the Midlands for Mathalion in Aragon 18 months ago, after Neil was made redundant from his job as a business analyst when the Birmingham firm Tucker Fasteners closed down. Rachel quit her job as a healthcare assistant at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Their new life here was made possible by Europe's open borders. I don't think we would have done it if there hadn't been the complete free movement between Spain and the UK and between other European countries. Because you see Spanish people like they're working in the hospital where I worked. And so it's, you know it's possible to freely move between the countries. But they tell me that talk back home of changing Britain's relationship with the EU is worrying them. You can end up in a, a tit for tat thing, you know, where Britain says, oh, we're going to give EU immigrants I don't know, half the benefits that the UK people do, or why wouldn't those other countries think, well, maybe we should do the same? And it could have a knock on effect. After the harvest, it's time for lunch with the kids. 10 year old Conrad and 15 year old Imogen are still getting used to what life is like as an EU migrant here. You can learn a new language. And the people here are nice and they don't really care what you like. So it's better in those ways. But then you miss your family and your friends back in England. They're among the 2.2 million Brits who spend at least part of the year living in other EU countries. Over a million of them are right here in Spain. Whether it's the rural life here in Mathalion that they're after or the sun and the sea of the southern costas, British expats have been making the most of the EU principle of free movement of people to come and live here in Spain in the same way as a Polish plumber who might have gone off to live in the UK. And so the debate over EU migration goes both ways. Mm. In the local bar, I find some Spanish farmers who are worried about what the impact of EU migration into Spain is having on their country at a time when many here are struggling with high unemployment and cuts to government spending. I would like them to close the door a bit and for fewer people to come in because there is a crisis here. We are in a bad way and we can't, we just can't have so many people coming in. A few miles down the road is Maya, which has seen an influx of British migrants. Among them, Karina and her husband Rafe, who've started a business cooking up traditional English food for expats. At the moment, it's Christmas puddings. And then what we do is we pour this in. A little at a time. She's originally from Burton upon Trent, not too far away from the Staffordshire spot where David Cameron laid out his plans to make EU migrants work for four years in Britain before they can claim benefits. Karina says he's got the right idea. I don't think uh, people who come over really want to um, be involved in British society. All they want to do is, is move, uh, have the benefits and, and, and everything else that goes with it. 
Very little light has been shed on what a possible in-out referendum on the EU might mean in practice for British expats like these. Neil and Rachel are just hoping that their Spanish dream keeps rolling on. And if they are forced to choose, they're sticking with Spain. Susanna Mendonca reporting there from sunny Spain. Now, Jim Carver, what would you say to those two couples we met in that film and apparently over two million other people who are getting very significant benefits to their life generally from exactly the sort of freedom of movement around Europe that your party is so strongly opposed to? What I would say, Patrick, is it's perfectly reasonable to expect that when Britain leaves the European Union, we, can, we Westminster, can negotiate a reciprocal arrangement with Madrid you know, no is, is that reasonable? Because we heard from Neil Lell that already he is concerned by the pressure that your party is putting on the political debate that there's going to be some kind of tit-for-tat response from Spain and life is going to be made less attractive. Not at all. It won't, it won't be in the Spanish government's interest because the majority of the Brits living, living in Spain are professional people or retired people. You know, they're in a different situation with, with you know, many of the people leaving Spain now. I mean, immigration to Britain from Spain is up 85% since 2011. So that's Spanish people coming because of the disaster of the Eurozone. So, you know, th those people are leaving for very different reasons to the people who are settling in Spain. And let's, you know, this isn't a, this isn't a new idea. Anybody would think that British people hadn't lived in Spain. We, Spain joined the European community, as it was then, in January 1986. And people have been living Brits have been living in Spain for many years. But Spanish, are you Spanish people, precisely, Spanish isn't that precisely the point? That yeah, you're but, swimming against the tide. Britain is an increasingly cosmopolitan country, and you're actually closing it down towards more of a sort of little England. No, mentality. not at all. Not, look, you know, Spanish people have been living here since, since the Roman Empire. Emperor Hadrian built the wall. He was Iberian. You know, we're, we've just looked at a video okay. of, of Aragon. Catherine of Aragon was was a, was okay. a queen. Let, 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 let's move as, as a Labour MEP, very much the party of in Europe in terms of the wider debate. And yet, it's quite interesting to hear from those guys in the bar. Not a significant sam sample, I admit, but Spanish opinion increasingly concerned about immigration into their country because they've got problems. So you're again swimming against another tide. No, I mean we've always had this scenario that we've had concentration of British people in certain places and certain countries. I, I just got to pick up this issue with Jim. I mean, this idea that we can have lots of reciprocal arrangements with different countries does make any sense whatsoever. It's complete nonsense. We are in the EU that allows our people to be out there. Is that there's many Brits outside as there are inside the UK. And if you bring in these borders and changes and you, you, all those people had to come back, Actually, Britain would still be the okay. same size. It makes no difference. Before, so, before I bring just, Jim back in on that know. point, Peter Luff, I, I, I have memories of you being quite sort of sympathetic to the general vision of Britain's place in the European Union. So what do you make of the general drift of this debate that we're seeing now? Well, I was encouraged by that film. I think what you saw there is Spaniards saying the kind of changes we want to make for, for Britain's relationship with the European Union would be very popular for the Spanish too. So I think it shows it bodes very well for our negotiation ahead of a referendum in 2017, getting the kind of changes that the Europe which benefit not just Britain but the whole of Europe. Does that mean then that you're comfortable with the direction of travel on your party? Because there is a perception that in one way you're you're, you're struggling not to be out UKIPed by UKIP. I, 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 share, I understand that concern. We mustn't do that. We mustn't try to out UKIP UKIP. We just make a case on our own merits in British interests. What we need for our relationship with Europe, a reformed European Union is what the British people want and we'll work very hard to get it. Jim, I know you wanted to get in. Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, this boils down to the question is who has control of our borders? Is it Westminster or is it Brussels? You know, and this is the question that needs to be answered. And with respect to Peter and to Nina as well. You know, we're okay, on that point, then, we're, Peter, we're, which, which is it? Is it Brussels? Well, or we, 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 we could do a lot to, make, to control our immigration much more effectively. The, the proposals Cameron, David Cameron set out last week for limiting in work benefits and current social housing to four years, even having four years for you qualify, is a very sensible change. The kind of thing that actually will make a big difference to EU migration to our country. But, but yeah. I mean, I do think we have issues. We don't count people in and we don't count people out. But a lot of immigration we get is outside. I accept that it's changing, but that's what has caused the problem that we don't know the numbers. But vast majority of people who are coming from within the EU 
are here because we've got skills shortages. Yeah, okay. You know, we've got okay. issues to address. So it's very simplistic to say okay. that, you know, vast majority of the EU um, migrants are, are degree holders. They come for work. Sure. They do not come here for benefits. There's a huge amount of evidence okay. to show that. Uh, the people who are unskilled who come in are from outside the EU. It's not going to make a difference whether let, we're let me in the EU what or what Nina's not. just said there with her sure. earlier point, Jim, about, you know, lots and lots of reciprocal arrangements between countries like Britain and Spain, and she has experience of that as an MEP, of course, to Nina's point. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't see what's wrong with sovereign governments negotiating reciprocal arrangements. The whole concept of reforming the European Union, as Sir Peter said, we've got to listen, and Nina will know it. She's a colleague of mine no, in the European Union. It makes no sense. No. I mean, how many times are you going to go through those ar arrangements, and what is it going to cost? You have a framework that works perfectly well. It's called you diplomacy. Know, it works very well. It doesn't in work most well. cases, it means that we do not have to negotiate over and over again. We have our own sovereign. We're outside of Schengen. So, so back we to have all those, those border controls. crossings that we remember from years ago, gone by, having to get the passport out every time? Surely, surely the fundamental duty of every government is to have control of their borders. And we hear, we hear what the European institutions are saying, the, the main players in Europe are saying, you know, the, the concept of free movement is a core principle of membership of the European Union. So any idea that Mr just Miliband or Mr Cameron... Which we have seen up. celebrated yeah. in that film just now. British people do benefit from that freedom. We can Absolutely. make the club better, we don't have to leave it. I'm, I'm sorry, you know, the, the European Union is unreformable. Uh, it's as simple as that. And what, what Britain is become, what Britain is saying, Nina, Nina, what, there are actually our own, you know, national competence. If we wanted to deal with issues of benefits and so on, we could have de de dealt with it. You know, there there is the free movement, but don't misrepresent it. The free movement is there for people to go and work. You know, or move for holidays. They okay. cannot Nina, move if, around if you on at, benefits. If you, look, and you know that. And if you look at the unemployment rates, if you look it. at the unemployment rates across the eurozone, if we look at Spain, for example, 53.6 percent of youth are unemployed in Spain. 23.6 percent of the, of the yeah. population I'll, are unemployed. I'll tell you what. You know, and what, what is happening is that Britain part, is becoming a lifeboat for the for the eurozone. Part, parting thought, really. What about those two million Brits who are overseas around the EU now? Would they have to come home? No, or come back to this of course country? not. It wouldn't be in the Spanish government's interest to ask or them to come they, home. I mean, yeah, so why, why, why would the Spanish, you know, my party is often accused, we're the, we're the people who are accused but, of but being But you cannot unreasonable. say we're going to pick and choose, you know. I'm going to give to... Peter Love the very last yeah. word on this question before we move on. It's important to remember that free movement of labour gives, gives us, brings us real benefits too. Okay. We gain real economic advantage from migration. We must make sure that migration is controlled, which it isn't okay. at present. It can't be. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it can Thank be. You. It can't be. Well, it can't be. If Thank you listen to what okay. Angela Merkel has said, you know, it can't be controlled. Thank you very much indeed. Particular thanks to you, Jim, for being with Thank us you. here today.